Hey, it's Bridget. Welcome. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope today. Got my coffee. Got a little different setup here because if you watch me on my Fairy Grasshopper YouTube channel, you already know this, but um, my little camera, my front facing camera, it's got a big scratch in it. So trying to make the best of things while we figure out technology. I also had, have been messing with some stuff with a new computer. I had to get a new computer because my old one is not working as it needs to be working in order to produce what we need to produce here on Above Life Channel. And I, so we bought, purchased one. We have to return it because it's not working right. It's definitely not a good fit for me. And so there's been lots of stuff I've been dealing with with technology. So <laughs> I'm making do with what I have and um, just being I'm being okay with that actually I'm not all mad about it or anything so I got a cup of hope here nice hot Java to to start our time together here on above life channel okay so let's get to some channeling would you like to do that if you've been watching recently you know that I have been really trying to show you as a viewer what it's like for me when I'm connected to spirit because I am connected and I want to show that because I want you to recognize in your day-to-day -day experiences how you also you are connected and it's not as fantastic miraculous and dramatic afterlife connection or spirit guide connection either one as it is presented to you it's not it's not as separate from everyone like there's not only elite people who can do it or make the connection or what have you there's people who are very good at it of course very good and great right but i want you to see this is real the whole purpose of above life channel is to inspire your spirit fill you with hope and encourage you to live your life and so to let you know that you are empowered to connect for yourself, okay? You can. And so let me show you, right? This is not a how-to, a one, two, three, four, five step program. This is not a quick fix or you must study under me for a year and give me thousands and thousands of dollars in order to learn my secrets. This is not what that is, okay? So let's cheers to hope. And let's spend some time with connection. Watch and see how I do it and feel, open up empaths. <laughs> Most of the people who watch Above Life Channel are empathic, which means, what does empath mean? It means that you feel energy, you feel emotions and feelings, mostly other people's, and can be very overwhelmed by that, which causes anxiety, depression, kind of isolation or separation and other circumstance in other extreme circumstances it can also just cause a lot of stress and a lot of confusion and self-doubt it clouds clouds the lens let's say that so feel this energy because feeling is part of the experience here and i want you to really feel use your empathic energetic connection for good use it for good okay for your good gonna kind of fail in this morning there's a couple of different people I had um, I've been connected with recently in the afterlife and I want to see I want to see I don't know you'll know because by the time you watch this video I'm itchy Ooh, I'm itchy I'm itchy by the time you watch this video um, it'll it'll say on the thumbnail the title hey, I'm really itchy I am feeling stuff <laughs> I can feel it Ooh, okay Oh, <laughs> Freddie Mercury. <laughs> oh my gosh, come here, honey. Oh, I need a big hug. Oh, I need a Freddie hug. I need a Freddie hug. I'm going to get emotional. <sighs> yes. 
I had, we had a dear friend who recently made a transition into the afterlife, who was a major Freddie fan, who was a very special friend of mine. She was amazing, is amazing in spirit form. And I just started to contact and connect with her yesterday. It's still new to me. So for my own personal healing, I'm gonna ask to not connect with her during this time, but I am gonna dedicate this connection to my sweet, sweet friend, Marita. In the afterlife oh, client and friend oh, oh honey I just love you so much Ooh. a lot of grief in my heart yeah he's acknowledging that geez Fred come on I should have grabbed some tissues you didn't I didn't I had no idea he says, no, no, Bridget, let me sit by you. Let me come sit right next to you. He's going to come sit right next to me, you guys. He's not going to face me. He's going to sit right beside me. <sighs> and he says to me, so how are you doing? How are you doing, Bridget? <laughs> I've been better. It's been a time. This weekend, oh my gosh, I'm going to have mascara all over you guys. And that's just the way life is. It's a human thing, you know. Oh, it's been a time this weekend. Um, we're doing the memorial for my mother-in-law and uh, we had relatives that needed to fly in from out of town. And then there's a family thing after, you know, and with finding out of um, Marita's passing, I honestly don't know how I'm going to handle that because mother-in-law was like 90 years old okay so she had a beautiful full life amazing spirit strong woman she's been struggling for the past few years with um alzheimer's and then very physical body stuff coming up um a lot of back stuff she's had back surgery a lot of stuff she had a lot of physical stuff she's so strong though never complained she never complained she's a wow tough woman i mean i just i loved her <laughs> she was awesome and she is awesome. In the afterlife, she's probably playing golf because that was her jam. But I have a, a hard, a hard um, perspective to have, Freddie, because my dad died when he was 52, which if you've watched my videos, you guys know um, or above life channel.com. I have my, my story about how I got psychic two years after my dad died is how I had the experience to open up really just to awaken. I just realized, Oh my gosh, I guess I'm psychic. I thought this was just, everybody had this, <laughs> that it was normal. Um, well, not normal, but you know what I mean? Like, I'm just really creative. I'm so imaginative. He was 52, 52 to 90, that's a kind of a gap, you know? Like, if my dad would have had 30 more years, like what, what would life have been like, you know? I, I don't know, I don't know. And I don't actually feel angry about my dad not having a longer life because I really feel at peace with, him. like he, he made choices and he dealt with the he dealt with his pain in his way and I can't I have no idea I didn't live his life I don't know what it's like so I'm not judging his his decisions about how he died or why he didn't tell anybody that maybe gee, maybe I could have had gee maybe it could be AIDS which is totally manageable you can live with that hello so I'm not really angry about like his thought process and stuff I am, I know you understand that, don't you? He says, I do, yes, I do. I understand what it's like, he says, not wanting your loved ones to have to bear the burden of your choices. This is what Freddie says, you guys listen to that. Not wanting your loved ones to bear the burden of your choices. Oh, that's a, I think that's probably a very natural thing, you're right. He says, think about your children. Yeah, I wouldn't want them to have to, carry the weight of that on their hearts you, your hearts feel heavy don't they yeah the grief is is tough so there's a weird a hard I'm gonna say a hard perspective because it's hard for me you guys 
So 90, awesome. Like talk about celebration of life, right? 52, hard to celebrate. Hard to celebrate that. And in contrast, you know, a little bit. Like it's just, it's kind of weird for me. It's kind of weird. It's apparent. And then he says, you talk about it. He says, talk about your talk about the pain. He says, talk about it. People need to know, he says, people need to know. They need to understand that it's human. He says, it's human to feel so deeply, he says. It makes the best art, <laughs> the best music, huh? The greatest song lyrics, would you say? Oh, life does. Life is such true art, isn't it, he says. Oh, Freddie, I just really appreciate your support and being here right now. I think about the death of my friend and it's the first time I've had someone who's had been an active client with me for the past few years make a transition and and I and I knew she was <clears throat> she fell ill in um, late last summer okay so i haven't been in human contact with her just just with her family and uh just briefly with her family and finding out that she's not he that i can't feel and have human conversation with her is just the saddest thing to me because she you guys have to understand <laughs> my pain is that she was this she was like my ideal client do you understand like this is why she is why i do the work i do because she came to me first for mediumship you guys <laughs> for mediumship we did a mediumship session She's the only one of her family that's still alive. Her brothers and sisters and parents transcended her in the afterlife. She has a loving husband who's wonderful. And I connected with her, with her family and all that and, and discovered this amazing spirit in this. body of a woman who was in her let's say let's say late 60s let's say that <laughs> and she just she didn't have any children and she had this but she had this just incredible perspective of wanting to do her work like wanting to heal stuff and wanting to talk about the afterlife and this life and then instead of dwelling on all the loss that she had she wanted to rediscover parts of herself and throughout her lifetime she loved to write for example she loved music she was a huge pretty fan of course and she wanted to rediscover those things and she was a crafter and in this part of her life she wanted to rediscover those things like from her youth that maybe she didn't spend as much time with, especially music, because her dad was really into music and she kind of was interested in it and then she kind of wasn't and she wasn't really sure and all this stuff and so. And she's a writer, an amazing writer. And I'm like, oh. I mean, she wrote some things. She started writing some things and she would tell me in our sessions about, oh, I wrote and I wrote about this. And now I'm like, oh, you guys literally, she could have been this incredible author that we could be cherishing her books and her knowledge and her wisdom had she shared it with us. But the fact that she didn't isn't a loss either. Like that's not grief there. 
there's so much gratitude that I have in my heart for the gift of her. Like she's the reason I do this because she was willing, like she was open to the healing of the, the, the mediumship and the connection. And she was very open to her own intuition and working on her own intuition. And she started to have intuitive connections. And, and then she was writing about her own life experiences and stories and poems, poetry, just beautiful. And she shared some, and I was just touched and moved and I felt such an incredible gratitude for the connection I got to have with her, you know? Such a wise woman and yet so youthful and young and willing to like do her work. Like when something came up and I'm feeling resistance, let me tell you. And she had health challenges too. She had some 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 health challenges and we talk about that. And you know, I'm feeling a little down today and here's what's going on. And we'd have conversations and just, she just showed up and connected to her spirit. And so now I'm gonna go do a memorial. Let me get some coffee, I need some coffee. Let me just, I need something stronger than coffee right now, probably. I went, I'm gonna go to a memorial for my husband's family and this weekend and then a social after and I just, I don't even, it's like how can I stay in my body and be present when there's other things like in my, on my heart, you know. He says, Bridget, Bridget, Bridget. We do the best we can. Isn't that what you say? He says, isn't that what you always say is we do the best we can. We just show up, I know. And she's partying in the afterlife. He's like, she is happy. She's, and I know because we've made some contact. I just found out yesterday. And we already made some initial contact. And my thought, initial thought was, why didn't I know? Why didn't you come to me right away? Why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you tell me is what I said to her. I'm like, why didn't you tell me? And she's like, I wanted to protect you is what she said. I wanted to protect you because the last few weeks, last few months have been a time of deep change for me and deep healing and deep personal work and and she's like, I didn't want to throw you, <laughs> throw you off too much, like throw the boat off too much and have you fall over the, like the boat was rocking to already and I didn't want you to fall overboard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's true. Let's see. This is the beauty of connection with the afterlife. Like I have Freddie right here with me. He's right with us. And this is what happens. Like, I feel him. I feel the friendship. I feel the support. And you can too, right? How can, how can people do that? Can you give, can you give some, um, can you give some advice in your words so that they, they feel you? Because, you know, sometimes people find videos that say Freddie Mercury and then they, they watch them and then they're all, well, that's just not very psychic. Or, oh, that's not like so-and-so's video is so much better. It's like, Really, please. Oh, girl, please. Watch the playlist. Spend a little time. Sit down, stay a while. Or not. <laughs> it's so funny. He's showing me this video where he's like vacuuming and looks like a woman, kind of. <laughs> I don't know what song that is. Write the song below, please. The, the, whatever song it is where there's a video where he's vacuuming and dressed like a woman. And he says, oh, oh, talk about getting a lot of unwanted attention for that. He said, do you think that was my idea? That was not my idea. And I feel like he says that's, is he saying that's Rogers? That's somebody else's idea. It was not my idea. That was not my idea. He says, he's like, do you think I didn't get a lot of, like he would say, I'm going to say backlash. He's using some other word for that. Um, and which is funny. So it's humorous. So he's like, you just have to be, he says, you just have to be willing to put yourself out there. Let people think you're crazy. He says, why does it matter? Are you happy? Are you enjoying connection? Are you enjoying chatting with the afterlife? Are you, are you? Because because your life without it is so much better. Well, your life without spiritual contact, he says, without the spiritual contact and that support is because it's so much better. Hmm. He says, hmm. suit yourself, basically. He's like, 
kind of like a, um, he says something else. What do you say? It's not your everybody's cup of tea. It's kind of like a suit yourself, but it's not, it's a different phrase. And I don't know, I can't quite get it. Must be all my heart energy, <laughs> my own personal heart stuff. Huh? Am I a little blocked? No, 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 he says. Oh, that's a good point. He says, we need to talk about that. We need to talk about blockage. <sighs> you know how sometimes, so this is Freddie's insight, okay? You know how sometimes when you're, um, sometimes you connect and you do a meditation. I'm going to share this in my words, but this is his message, okay? You know how sometimes when you have a great meditation and it's awesome and you're like, oh my God, that was so good. I felt amazing. I felt so good. And then the next time you meditate, it's like, eh, meh. It's like that. That's how spiritual connection works. So he says, don't get, don't get hard on yourself. Don't get down on yourself. If, if we, he says, if we connect and we have a great talk and then we don't connect for a while, it, it, he says, he's so, he's so funny because he says, I'm not offended if you don't reach out to me. It's not, it's not, there's none of that. There's none of that. There's none of, none of that. You don't need to worry about any of that. None of those human pleasantries or those polite expectations are non-existent. He says, there's no time here. Like he says, there's no like time. There's no pers persona confinement or boundaries or barriers. Okay. So he says, um, when you're blocked, it simply means that you could be needing to focus on something else right in front of you at the time or preparing for something that is coming to you like a relationship a um, he says it's not a block a blockage is not necessarily because of something negative either he says it's not something horrible or hor horrific that's going to happen you know he says it's not necessarily that it it could be that there is an opportunity for you to um to address some of your feelings from the past. And I would say unresolved things kind of bubble up. Sometimes they percolate based on like a show you, a TV show you watched, a news thing that triggered you, something on Facebook, a quote, something you've heard somebody say at the grocery store, an image on a newsstand that takes you back in time to a time in your life that triggers something or opens up something, unlocks something for you, which actually ends up being kind of this block of of time or no time energy space stuff that gives you a it, it presents a purpose for you to release some of the pent-up emotions Freddie's saying pent-up emotions that you maybe didn't deal with at the time for whatever reason he says no judgment he's not judging you he's not being critical he is not critical at all he's funny He'll, he'll joke with you about your own self-sabotages, about your own self-doubts, because it's, he says, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It, it, if that's one thing, he says, I could do for humanity, for my human friends, I would just wipe out the doubt, because that would just let people be so much more free to, to explore, you know, and then discover, he says, Freddie says, the things that, that, that you're good at and that you enjoy and to find those sweet spots, you know, and he says, and then when you have something that feels like a block or i'm going to say resistance he keeps saying blocks and blockages those are the words he's using my blocks my blockages i see them as like your blinders or your resistance is what i would call that and some people would be like okay well it's time for a clearing yes but sometimes a clearing is about he says use your empathic powers use your superpowers your empathic superpowers and feel 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 he says the emotion and he says it doesn't have to be freddie says it doesn't have to be directly correlated to that event that experience you don't have to figure it out or oh, i better find the piece of the puzzle oh my gosh i need the piece of the puzzle he looks at me like who does puzzles anyway like who does that that to me that's not relaxing he says, I don't, don't look at me. I don't have time for puzzles. He says, I have time for, for pets and people. <laughs> he says, for pets and people. So the mind, the figuring it out part, what about that? Can you give us some advice about that? Our blockages. He says, the mind is most of the problem. So if you were crazy and were to lose your mind, you might be rather much more happy. 
And if you weren't happy, you wouldn't be aware that you weren't happy because you would be out of your mind. He's, you're so philosophical, Fred. Fred, you're just so philosophical. You know what I'm thinking when I'm holding this mug? We should make a red one for you. Oh, ooh, good idea. I should get my husband on that. He, he does, he helps with the merch stuff. I should get my tech guy on that. Yeah, yeah, red one. Maybe with like big lips on it or something. He looks at me like, like, you know, like a kiss, like a mwah, a Freddy kiss, like a mwah, masterpiece. Oh, delicioso. <laughs> He's like, I'm not a, sh you know that I was a musician. I, I, I was not a chef. I'm like, I know, I don't know. I'm just a little, 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 little. Uh, energy. Uh, now I feel, at, I'm going to share with you guys. You guys, so you know I'm clairvoyant also, right? So I see, which is the psychic gift of sight. And in addition to empathic, feeling, sensing, so the sight part. So I see, I always see red around Freddy. It's very grounded, hard energy to me. That's what red is. It's root chakra and heart chakra working together. And so I always see that. I always think red when I think Freddy. And in love, right? The, the good kind of love, the, the real, real, real kind of love. And, <laughs> and that's funny, right? Okay, so inside joke, funny. Sorry. <laughs> People are going to think I'm nuts and I'm okay with that. I'm quite all right with the crazy, right? Um, and I, right now, as we are talking about the blockages piece and then moving up to the mind, I am feeling and so I'm going into the mind, but I am feeling this wanting to kind of bounce down into what's almost like a kid's trampoline of the belly, the low belly. So right at the solar plexus belly, not quite the hips and the pelvis, but right at the solar plexus, like a trampoline bounce. And then I see yellow and yellow is the solar plexus, the solar energy, the sun energy. It can, for me, it can represent masculine energy in part and the healing of the masculine, which is really beautiful. That kind of unity energy, that bonded unity energy. And then solar plexus spirit, our purpose, our passion, our desire, and the way that you connect and we connect with spirit, right? So when it comes to blockages, yes, it's your mind that's telling you all the things you cannot do. What can you do? Ask the mind, okay, so I, you, you present to me what I can't. What can I? What are my cans? What are my cans? That would be a great journaling opportunity after a meditation. What are my cans? What are my cans? The mind is not a villain. It's not evil. I, at all, in my work, if you ever work with me in intuitive coaching sessions, you know that I'm like, hey, we're all four parts of ourselves here. We're all about the in inclusion and the cohesive working together of the body, mind, heart, and soul. So there are four parts and they all get a voice and they're all equal parts of us, even though one leads sometimes takes up the slack from another that's working on something internally and sometimes stuff shows up in one area and not another and so the others kind of come around it to help rally to help support it that's how we work that's how it works people and to be a whole person that's how it works you need the body the mind the heart and the soul so when we're up in the mind I see this again this beautiful yellow energy and I kind of bounce down and I literally feel this buoyancy this bouncing on this trampoline energy that means it's not landing, which means you're not like sinking in, connected, comfortable here, but it means it's playful. So it's okay to utilize your mind and ask, ask and talk about, like have dialogue with your brain about, okay, so I know the can'ts, I'm used to that. So what are the cans? What are the cans? And sometimes the can do's or the can be's or the can see, I can feel this. Um, sometimes you can partner, then drop into the heart first and be like, how do I feel? What am I feeling right now? Give yourself permission to feel something, to let yourself feel. Like just ask your body, do a check-in. How do I feel right now? So your heart will tap into the body and bring up some energy. And so then we have the mind, the heart and the body. And now boink, right into the solar plexus, boing, 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 right, right into that bouncing energy of that solar plexus. And be playful there. Be playful with intuition and spirit. It's not serious, deep, and intense all the time. Yes, when I do mediumship work, yes, it's about healing. And yes, grief comes up. And believe me, I know as a human, especially right now, that grief sucks. Okay? She is a bag of lady with a lot of luggage. And I gotta carry it and unpack it 
and some of it I just donate to the Goodwill and the rest of it I'm like, okay, I'm gonna sit right here for a little bit until I'm ready to deal with that. And so grief has stages and cycles and layers and it's been 19 years this year since my dad made his transition and it's, it's different, but it's not, I'm not like totally fine because look what happens. My husband's mother dies lives a full beautiful life and then i look at this and i'm like well wait is this doesn't feel fair like how is this fair you know and then at the same time i'm like celebrating this is great but at the same time in my heart i'm like but this isn't fair like my dad never met my kids he met my daughter i was very very pregnant with my son he my son arrived how many weeks three or four weeks i don't remember exactly how many weeks after the month after my dad died. So my dad died in August, my son came in September. So he didn't meet him in human form. He was there at his birth though, energetically, spirit he was. And so he doesn't know any of my kids. He doesn't have, hasn't met my husband. I mean, it's just like in human terms, right? In human form. So there's a lot of missing, a lot of missed outs on, um, he won't have great grandchildren, like all these things that are like, just not there anymore. They're all wiped out. And that makes me think of then our dear sweet friend, Marita, who at that crack of, of 70, right? <laughs> Actually, I don't want to say her real age because I don't know if, I don't know if she'd appreciate that. <laughs> she'd say, just tell him I'm older. I'm an older lady. We'll just say in her late 60s, we'll say. And she had this just incredible youthful energy and willingness to really engage with life and work with life. And like this, this kind of appreciation and this joy, like this constant creative, that's a good way to describe her, don't you think? Inspirational, he says. Ins she's an inspirational energy. He said she's an inspirational spirit. She is an inspired spirit, Bridget. He says she is an inspired spirit. So then I have this experience with her and and then this experience with my mother-in-law, who's this is full life and was happy and, you know, had her family meant the most to her and she just and she had a lot of friends and she just had this relationships meant a lot to her and she just just a, an incredible person and lived a very long life, right? Very full life. And so I have all these perspectives. And then I have to take all these energies that are also wrapped in grief, got to unpack the grief parts, right? And bring the good parts together and utilize them as tools or medicine, crush them up and make them into medicine that I might need for my journey. Like how can I take these three experiences? Because especially the parental ones, you guys, those two, the, my dad's death and my husband's mom's death, those two for some reason, and my, da my husband's dad died when we were dating. So I had that experience with him, but it wasn't like this. This is different for me. This is really different, actually. It feels just like a big polarity, duality. I don't know, it's just like this huge gap piece here. And in between that gap of his experiences and his grief, and my grief from 19 years ago is like coming up a little bit. And then this like feeling of things not being fair and or like not fair to me, not not about my dad, not about my husband, not about my husband's mom, not about that, but about me. Like, this is not fair to me. Like, I literally felt that. And I'm like, wow, this is a part of grief. I haven't peeled off that layer before that. This isn't fair to me part. Do you guys feel that in your grief process? Like. This isn't fair to me. I am upset about how this is not fair to me to have to feel grief on top of grief again. Like this experience is part of a place in my heart that is constantly evolving and growing and getting bigger. And yet at the same time, I'm feeling that this experience with this, these griefs coming together is a process of softening for me personally. That's how I'm feeling this. And I'm just trying to let myself be in it. And that is not easy, especially when my job is to be psychic, <laughs> to be a medium, to channel. And, and yes, I'm still, I'm of course, I'm doing private sessions, just so you know, of course I am, because it's just, it's, that part is easy. Like I can do that, you know, I can, I can do that. That's like, ooh, yay, that makes me feel good, you know? But 
this part is the hardest. This is hard. This is the hard stuff. And yet we're made for it. Like we can manage this, we can handle it, you know? And I am inspired, especially by my friend in the afterlife. She is, oh, sorry, I'm not, yeah, I'm not just talking about you, Fred. Everybody's inspired by you, Freddie. But for me personally, I'm really inspired by her because I'm like, when I'm in my late sixties, if I can still be like, hey, I'm working it, hey, I'm doing some psychic medium stuff, that kind of thing, I will be very, happy mm -hmm. and I interestingly looking back at my timeline so I had to do this I'm gonna be recording some videos on fairy grasshopper YouTube channel that I show the reading that I did that morning before I found I started to do a reading before I found out of her death and then I stopped it so I'm gonna do a video about that with a reading and talk to you about that on fairy grasshopper YouTube and then show you looking back over the past like week or so how my my morning readings because I do morning readings for myself I started to document some of those so people could see how I, I do stuff for myself and you can see the pattern now I look back and I go oh my gosh this and this and this and I'm like oh my god this was a message from her this was this is her words she's repeating back to me something very specific that I said to her in a session and I and it just clicked and I was like oh my god <laughs> oh my god she was trying to reach me and I was so with the grief of my mother-in-law and the connection of my dad's energy overlay and me feeling like why is this like why is this so hard for me like why is this happening like why is this not fair to me and like what the heck I have other things I want to be doing I have big bold beautiful dreams and joyful energies that I want to share for my business and my program for the fall and all this and here I am dealing with my own stuff <laughs> I'm like what I have to do other work sessions are easy but the other stuff the business stuff's hard it's hard to do that when you're failing it's hard to focus with the brain when you're failing all the time and so you have to you guys will have to watch watch those because again fairy grasshopper youtube channel because it's just amazing to look back and see how the messages were coming through but i couldn't hear them why because i i looked back over the timeline too because i was like wait a minute what the heck because i know she was also in like a, a coma kind of state um inability to communicate and stuff at a point here and i know that and so i I looked back and timing wise, I stopped doing, remember I took a break on Above Life channel, channeling videos. I took a break in uh, July of 2020 and I started back in October of 2020. I took a break from channeling and because of just so much energy with the pandemic and lots of transitioning and I just could not, it was too much for me, up layered upon my own grief, right? And at the same time, I didn't realize then all of a sudden that just like two weeks later is when she fell ill and went into this kind of state. And then I, to this day, I have not done just a mediumship session since that time. I have just really just cocooned myself away from personal mediumship sessions because of the layers of my own pain related to grief and so in session because it's an empath connection that I make with people I feel their pain but it, it amplifies mine and so I have been working for the past several months on healthy boundaries in my heart space because of that because I want to be able to to help people in their grief grief process he says you need to he said you should Bridget but he's like you should I know and I know I'm good at it because I can do the beautiful healing shifting clearing of energy at the same time as i can do the communication and sometimes people just need that and then they re feel released and they feel relief and then they can move on with their lives and sometimes that is all it takes i'm like but the burden of the responsibility of that is a lot on you when you also have your own pain and so it makes sense that then during all this time I wouldn't be able to do mediumship and that was a good call on my part in private session that was a really good call because I would have probably just been angry or resentful and been like why why do I have to do this why is why is this not fair to me this is not fair to me why do I have to do this you know that kind of a thing like why God why kind of a thing right 
So that might be way too much information about me, Bridget, as a person, but I think it's important for you to understand on Above Life Channel that we are about being humans, spirits, living in a human body, being in our fullest expression. That's why, you're, that's why you came. That's, why, that's what you want. You want the full package, not just part of it. Stop just focusing on your mind. Stop just letting your feelings run you. Stop just skipping out of your body and doing all this astral traveling and all this other stuff because I just can't stand my body so I'm just going to zoom out all the time. No, be here for the full experience. I'm here. We can do this. We can do this together. And every week on, on Above Life Channel, you've got Sunday morning coffee to help inspire your spirit. You've got a weekly channeling session, which hopefully now they're going to get a little more fun now that Bridge is working on our grief stuff, right? So hopefully they'll get a little more lighthearted. <laughs> and you got Fairy Grasshopper Channel. I, I I have like at least two videos every week there. I try to make it so there's almost a video every single day between Above Life Channel and Fairy Grasshopper so that people can constantly plug in, get their coffee. Like I'm kind of, I'd like to be your Java, your coffee, your inspiration, your pep and your step. <laughs> that would be nice, huh? Mm -hmm. So Freddie always, always puts us in a good mood, doesn't he? And now I feel relaxed. I feel like. I just exercised. <laughs> I feel better like sharing this with you. I think it's important because I know that many of you feel like you know me. I get very deeply personal emails from many of you, very personal. And I know it takes a lot in order to have that kind of trust and relationship with someone. And so energetically, I know that you know me and I know you and I feel that that, that loving f f support for your spirit. I do feel that. I do. So, thank you so much, Fred. Thanks for being. Thanks for making it a little bit easier for me. I appreciate it. A little shoulder bump there. Thank you for being here. I hope that I've inspired your spirit today with some of the information that we've shared. And you know, Freddie, he's just an inspiration in and of himself. Filled you with some hope. And remember, this is your life now. All this content is helping to fill your cup, so that you can live your life. It's your life, after all. And it's your job to live it. <laughs> Just live it. Hey, thanks for being here.